Badge cams like this make my heart hurt big time, but they are important learning tools. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Blount County, Tennessee. That could be a wrong pronunciation. Let us know in the comments. I've sped pieces of this up just for the sake of time. We're watching Deputy Eggers in car camera here. You see this guy, you know, he goes over the line multiple times. So she has probable cause for a stop. She's gonna pull him over. It takes him forever to get his car out of the roadway for her. And then she's going to come and talk to him. I've, I've left some context here so you can see how her interaction goes. It's very professional. Let's listen in to her badge cam. All right, my friend. Now that we're out of the way there. I'm sorry. That's all right. My name's Shelby. I work for the Blount County Sheriff's Office. I stopped you not because you were all over the road. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't I didn't notice it. I, was okay. putting, I just put my hair up. Putting your hair up? Yeah. Okay. Have you had anything to drink or anything? Oh, hell yeah, no. Okay. No. I'm really just like leaving. That? No, I'm just leaving Suburban. Okay. Uh, just got back from uh, Gallenberg Pittman. Cool. Just got a phone with my son. I said, son, you should have came home because he heard his knee were back, the GP game. Mm -hmm. And I, I literally just got the phone with him. Okay. Did you go to the game? Yeah. I, okay. We literally got just got done. Okay. They're still there. I literally can show you. I just got the phone with my okay. son. I, I believe you. And, Where are you uh, headed to tonight? I'm on my way home. Where you live at? Uh, Alcoa. Hemlock Alcoa? Street. Alcoa? Okay. Me? Go for it. You care for see your driver's license, registration, yeah. proof insurance, please? All right, thank you. All right, thank yeah, I'm you, sorry about that. I didn't, I didn't think right. I was swerving up. Yeah, well, it, you, you went across the line just a little bit, and I thought, well, you know, maybe I would just put my hair up. I'm sorry, I got hot. I just put my hair up. I got I'm, you. Yeah, you I were like, you were all the home, way completely in the other lane. That's, I called my mom and say, so. ma'am, mom. I'm not gonna make it tonight. I just, I gotta okay. go get clothes. Like I'm just dealing with a lot. I, I promise okay. I didn't do nothing, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry you're going through some stuff. So. Oh, it's a lot going on. Yeah. But I literally just got to phone my son, just talked to the guy that's painting. Uh -huh. I, uh, sent me a picture of uh, some light. I've sped this other piece up as well, is she talks to him for a significant amount of time. She's making phone calls so that we can establish whose car this is. There's all kinds of that stuff. Just sped it up just because of the time involved. It's a very cordial interaction. Um, I am going to have you step out and hang out with me. Um, step out for what? So, I smell weed in the car. Have you ever I smoked weed, weed in this car? Nobody. I don't smoke or nothing. Okay, you don't smoke yeah. or nothing? No. That, has anybody ever smoked nobody. in the car? Nobody. This is okay. my grandma's car. Okay, that's, that's I got you. Bogus, okay, Man. well, I smell it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you step out and hang out with me. Okay, my partner's going to get here. I'm going to search as long as everything's good. I'll get you home. There ain't no weed in here. Nobody okay. smokes weed. That's, that, don't do me like that now. Okay. Don't like, do you I'm, like what? Why can't I have to start out? She's trying to say she smells weed. Now, my like... You know I don't okay. smoke weed. No, nobody I know smoke weed. Okay, I didn't accuse you of smoking like I weed. I got my kids' no. backpacks and food. We literally just okay. went to okay. Weed. okay. Exactly, it's been a leather. Okay. It's never been smoked. Like cigarette. this, this just it's me, man. My own black, and they gon' they just being messy. It ain't got nothing when like. It ain't got nothing to do with that, brother. I guarantee you, run a dog right here. I don't know if the dog get on this car. Okay. So I'm gonna sit right here. Our dogs don't. Dog our dogs don't hit uh, hit on weed, and there's not a dog coming out here. It's it's me and my partner. Well, I'm not. I'm I'm re I'm refusing to. Search. No, there's there's no there's no refusing. So when I'm I smell so search, when I smell when I smell this the odor of marijuana I have probable cause to search the vehicle. I need you to get a so dog, ma'am. I'm refusing to search. There's no refuse. refusal. There's no weed. Go get your partner and tell him to come over and sniff. Okay. My I my see. partner is not a dog. My partner's a person. Okay, that's let on your the way. Partner come sniff. I'm okay. refusing to search. That's fine. You, you can't refuse a search. Why can't I refuse a search? Because I've, I've got probable cause to search the vehicle no because of the cause. smell. Okay. Now, they trying to be messy for no reason? I'm not trying to be messy with you, brother. I'm trying to make this easy, okay? I'm just refusing a search. I love you, Memo. She's going to sit there and argue with him for a good long while, waiting for her backup, Deputy McCown, to show up. So this guy is going to continue to say that, you know, he's being targeted because of his race and those things. Deputy McCown is going to show up. It's going to escalate in a hurry. From there, let's listen in. Come down to Little Road, like 10 minutes. 
I just need you to step out of the car, I'm not, Kenny. I'm refusing to search, man. Okay, I so, so here's what's going to happen if you don't step out of the car. I We're going to have to drag you out of the car, I and then you're going to go to jail. I don't smoke marijuana. So you can either step out of the car, I or I can pull you out of the car. You can step out the car. No, sir. You can, you you can step the out the car, or I'm pulling you out of the car, Kenny. She asked you. She, I, I, she asked you to get out of the car. Get out of the car, brother. Y'all said it smelled like weed. I need you to get a dog, please. No, we don't. We don't I'm have to have a dog, to a dog when it smells there like weed, brother. No get out of the car. In this okay. Car. I'm gonna tell you one more time, Kenny. Get out of the car. I, I can't, man. You can't. I'm can. recording this. Okay, I'm you can record you right it. Now. That's fine. I'm recording too. I've recorded this whole interaction. Go ahead and get but out. I'm not doing nothing wrong. You were on the wrong side of the road, Kenny. I was not on the wrong side. You of the were driving on the wrong side of the road, brother. Get out of the car. Side of the road. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. I'm not. No, don't touch my car. No, you can't do that. Get out of the car. Do that. You can't do this, man. You can't do this. Get your hands off of me, man. Please. Now, please get your hands off of me, please. Please. Get out of the car. I'm asking you to please. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Now. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Please. Now. Please, I'm not doing nothing wrong. Get out of the car. Please, can I answer my no. call? No, get out of the car. Now. Out of the car. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Get out of the car. Why are y'all doing this to me, man? Why are you doing this to me? Get out of the car, man. I'm not doing nothing get wrong. Get out of the car, Kenny. This is not my car. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I didn't wrong. say it was your car. Get out of the car, Kenny. Go ahead, hit him. Out of the car. For, man? Get out of the car. What are you hitting him for? Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Don't do nothing! Get out of the car! Do nothing! Get that seatbelt on! Please, please don't do this to me! You're about please. to get it again! You're gonna get please! It again, please! Please! Please stop! Let me talk to my middle of my this please twist it really tight twist it again oh my god okay twist it again twist it as hard as you can okay I got you that's good put it in the thing it's there okay oh my god Here, 345 Do you need I've got something? a tourniquet applied Have you got I'm trying to get to 344 so the suspect's going. He went, I went that way. I gotta get you. Oh, I gotta get you my partner. From Deputy McCown's position, you can see the taser deployment there. And then, you know, the guy's obviously not getting out of the car. And then when Deputy Eggers is going to try to get him out by unlatching his seatbelt, she contacts the taser probes. And so she's going to catch some of the lightning and then get away from him. Well, unbeknownst to either one of them, he had a firearm on his person. He's a prohibited person, uh, a former felon, and uh, he is gonna then draw that gun, shoot Deputy Eggers once in the right leg, and then turn and shoot Deputy McCown uh, several times, and then drive off. She got shots back towards him. They did not hit him, 
Unfortunately, Deputy McCown did not make it through this incident. Deputy Eggers did. She had one entry wound and two exit wounds from her right leg. It took him five days to find this guy. He is charged with very serious uh, felonies, including murder of a police officer. Thankfully, Deputy Eggers seems to be making a full recovery. Man, just tough stuff. Hey, if you're here on badge cams, are you listening to the podcast? I mean, it's top 0.5% in the world. Yeah, that's true. And people ask, like, how do you know that? There's a website called listennotes.com and they keep track of these sorts of things. I'm no Joe Rogan, but we're doing pretty good. So obviously Deputy Eggers had probable cause to pull this guy over and then she's gonna, you know, create a, a very kind traffic stop. I think she handled this one very professionally. And, and you know, Mike, I think that uh, sometimes we see too many badge cams of cops kind of acting like jerks. Here we see one where she was super professional and very kind. I can already tell, John, we're, we're going to have the people complaining about the, the petty tyrants, right? Why are they messing with this guy? They should have left him alone. No, they shouldn't have. They should have pulled him over because he was exhibiting signs of being under the influence of something. We don't know what yet. Um, and it was a, a two-lane road at night. It, all he had to do was cross the middle line at, at the wrong time, and he's got a head-on collision, and people get hurt or God forbid killed. So the reason for the stop is 100% legal and it's 100% justified. And it's what I want my cops doing, by the way. I want them doing that. You know, folks who don't know, John had a terrible accident involving a drunk driver years ago. He was recovering from that when we first met. And I remember the the pain he went through and it was just terrible. So I want this guy stopped. That's the first thing. Yeah, 100%. Second thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just want to get this out. And then once he stopped legally and they asked him to get out of the car, you have to get out of the car. Pennsylvania versus Mims. Look it up. That's a thing they can do. So there's no point in arguing whether or not they had the legal right to do that. They did. And, I, and again, I want them doing that. I want to make sure this guy is sober. Hey, if you're sober and good to go, dust you off. Down the road you go. That's not what happened. Yeah. And, and again, arguing with a cop on the roadside, you're never going to get away with that. This guy ends up escalating this to murder. And people say, well, why are they screwing with him? Well, because they run into people like this, felons in possession of firearms who are willing to kill cops, who are driving erratically in danger to the community. And Mike's right, I have two ruined discs in my back from a drunk driver uh, back in 2000. So listen, you cannot refuse to get out of the vehicle during the investigation of a traffic offense. The officer has the right to remove you from the vehicle, Pennsylvania v. Men's, and to pat you down via a Terry Frisk for weapons. They just do. Now that's what the real problem is here, that this guy is a felon in possession of a firearm and, and he's worried that he's gonna get, you know, he's gonna, gonna get caught for that and end up buying himself a couple of years in the pen. Now, now listen, uh, the answer to that of course is not to be a felon in possession and, and we can argue about Tennessee's uh, marijuana laws and I think they're stupid and should change and, and we can even argue about felon in possession laws, okay? But the, the reality is neither of those things are, are really what the problem is here other than him deciding, I'm not going to, to uh, obey the law when pulled over by law enforcement. And if you do the crime, you've gotta be willing to do the time. Now, Mike, I do wanna talk here about the taser because I think the taser was not a good tool here. I think he had too much clothes and he's in a car. I just don't think it was a good solution. I uh, concur. We, and another thing we talked about uh, before we hit the record button, one of the training points we wanted to make was exactly that. This taser, look, what does a taser do at its essence, right? It incapa literally incapacitates pretty much every muscle in a person's body. It's being electrocuted. It's a minor electrocution enough to render you helpless and, the, and you're not able to move. So you see the problem with using a taser, which, which uh, doesn't allow you to move your muscles to get someone out of a car. You're asking them to do a thing. So I think the taser, as far as getting someone out of a car is a terrible tool. I understand the idea is pain compliance, right? We're going to give the guy some pain that hopefully will be enough to overcome his will and he will then submit and do the thing we're asking him to do. Um, but John and I are in agreement here that pepper spray would have been a great solution. Before you start typing that, well, now you have a disabled driver, you know, who's even in worse shape now because he can't see where he's going. Look, everything that happened to this guy, he brought on himself, right? Uh, so if, if he decides to drive off somehow after he's been pepper sprayed, I don't think he's going to make it very far. He's going to hit the nearest thing, probably a tree in this situation, and be pretty much harmless. I think pepper spray was the way to go. Now, instead, because the taser and the way it works, right, it's on or it's off, it, you know, when the probe leaves his body or the juice stops flowing, now he's got the ability to act and it's completely gone. So he draws a gun here from concealment and puts the first shot in Deputy Ager's leg. Remember, officers, you are always fighting at a disadvantage here because, again, when he decides to pull the weapon and go to work, you're, you are behind the power curve. So she is hit in the right leg in her femur. That is a big, big to do. 
And, and so recognize you're just not going to get the first shot off an awful lot of times. And this is maybe five yards away. So she's a kind of a little bit away from there here, purely a lucky hit, but unfortunately luck works both ways. Yeah, um, we said it in a recent video. It, it seems like every time you have a cop versus a bad guy being injured, the cop gets nicked on the elbow and bleeds to death on the side of the road. The bad guy gets filled in with 27 rounds and manages to live to cost the taxpayers, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for the rest of his life. This is really hard to watch. And I, I heard somebody say one time, it was a, a prominent law enforcement trainer, that we need to stop showing rookie cops and people in the academy so many videos of cops getting shot on traffic stops and losing the fight because it gives them the impression that that's something that happens all the time and it really doesn't happen it happens way more than it should but it's not an everyday occurrence i mean i i think in my 22 years working for the feds in san diego we lost maybe three or four cops in this way in san diego county which is a big place but i think it's important for officers to see this so that they can learn they can get a mental rep right and they can they can learn okay if I'm in a similar situation to this, here's what I'm going to do differently because I've seen this bad outcome and I don't want to repeat that. And I really think she did a fine job of getting herself to cover after this and of acting well. And I do think that these kinds of incidents are very valuable for us to look at because it allows us to put ourselves in the position of these officers and ask, what would I do and get a mental rep so that we can do better? She falls over, okay, fine. Now she shows great emotional fitness, getting up, running with a bullet through her leg, getting her firearm out, getting fire back on this guy, and then continuing to think, what do I need to do now? That level of emotional fitness is very admirable from Deputy Eggers. And of course, Deputy McCown really had no chance. I mean, uh, he got hit and he was out of the fight and our prayers and consolation to his family for uh, losing a, a wonderful person, right? He was a, a really good dude. Now. She's got to start thinking, he's off and gone. Okay, fine, I need to get a tourniquet on. Great, a little bit, I, I think it should have been staged a little bit better, it wasn't quite ready for her, okay? So deputies, officers, troopers, please stage your tourniquets correctly. And also, if you're in the general public, guess what? This is why one of the reasons you need to have first aid skills and first aid equipment, because I've been first responder at multiple car wrecks and you might run across an officer in need of assistance right here and you don't want to just look at him and go, dude, that's a bummer. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, I have, I keep uh, two tourniquets in my car and I keep uh, one really good, well-stocked uh, Mountain Man medical trauma kit. Uh, I leave it in a place where it can be easily gotten to, even to the point where I'm thinking, okay, if the car gets hit in a certain way, I place it centrally so that if the doors are, on my car, for example, are, you know, nailed shut because of a collision on one side, I can get to it from another, I get to it from the tailgate, neither here nor there. I'm going to talk more about the law enforcement side of this. If you don't have, if you have a firearms training staff and a defensive tactics training staff, and you don't have at least one person or two people who are certified, trained the trainer certified to teach stuff like stop the bleed and, and tourniquet application, you're doing your department and your community disservice. Every quarter when you go to do your DT and your firearms, you know, your firearms qualifications and your training, applying a dummy tourniquet like 10 times to a partner should be a not a no-brainer it'd be something you do all the time because it, it is not it's not an intuitive thing if you look at a tourniquet for the first time you're not going to understand how it works you gotta and you don't want to have to be fumbling with it in the moment of truth again she did a fine job here i'm not i'm not throwing throwing any shade at this this deputy but it's important for you as an officer as a deputy to make sure you know exactly how to do that and to do it quickly and, and listen how quickly? Well, listen, you could bleed out in as little as 30 seconds. And, and so, I, again, from this perspective, Deputy McCown, may you rest in peace, sir. Uh, and my condolences to your family. Just a, a terrible, terrible outcome all the way around. And, and this is another great reason. Officers, practice spiritual fitness. Okay, Make sure that you've lived a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent life, that you've said everything you need to say to your loved ones, that they know that you love them, and that you and Jesus have a strong relationship because you're going to need it on that day. And you may not have any opportunity to get it. Uh, I think that Deputy Eggers did a really fantastic job here and tried her very, very best in dire circumstances. Um, I hope they bury this guy, this perp, under the jail, quite frankly, and, and let's learn the lessons that we can to redeem this tragedy somewhat so that the next officer can better cover the rest.